Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look at installing the BMW rail kit for your fifth wheel hitch on a 2022 Ram 2500. Now this is going to be rated at a good weight capacity for your fifth wheel trailer or your fifth wheel camper and it's going to come in at a weight capacity of 18,000 pounds so you're going to want to make sure you pick up a fifth wheel that can handle that and also check to make sure that the truck can handle that before hooking up but those are some pretty serious numbers to move some pretty serious weight. And this is also going to be ISR rated, so meaning this is going to be the standard size of rails. That way you can drop in a number of different hitches, and there's plenty of options here available at eTrailer that are going to perfectly fit your needs. Now something I am going to point out is with the fifth wheel and the ram box style of truck, it is pretty narrow in here, and you don't want to make any damage to the side of your truck when making turns, so I do recommend having a rotating head. Uh, the re sidewinder is a great option, and that's really going to just pivot up higher that way it's not going to make contact with your bed while towing now as far as installation goes this is a pretty easy kit to do uh, your chassis is already kind of set up to get these custom fit brackets and the kit is designed to work directly with your truck so you know, there's no drilling required as far as mounting those brackets to the frame the only drilling required is to obviously make holes for your carriage bolts to pass down to those brackets and overall this is pretty easy it can be done i would say in about three hours or so you can do it in your garage or in your driveway there's gonna be a few spots that may get a little bit tight but overall it's pretty easy install and it's a bmw which really speaks volumes about their quality as far as their hardware their powder coating everything about the kit is just very high quality and this is no different than the rest of their components so as far as that installation i want to make sure you get yours installed so let's take a look at that now to begin our installation we're going to want to go ahead and lower down our spare tire it's just going to make a lot more space for us underneath and that's honestly the hardest part is while you're under the truck is making sure you have space to get all your brackets and hardware in place so getting this out of the way is just going to open that up for us we're also going to go ahead and remove our heat shield again just to kind of give us a lot more space to work now it's going to be just a series of 10 millimeter bolts that we have so there you can see that there's four of them right here there's also going to be two that kind of go on this cross beam so make sure you get those as well So at this point, we're going to take our rail that we have, just one of them, they're both the same, and we're going to set the front part. Uh, this is going to be kind of our baseline as to get the rest of it in place. So you're going to want to measure from the end of the bed, not the tailgate. And also, this one has a spray and liner, so you're going to want to take that into account. A lot of times it'll be about an eighth of an inch, give or take, but kind of just get the best measurement you can to the edge of the rail here. Now we are going to be uh, making sure that it's centered up. So what I've done is I've used a chalk marker. Uh, that way, you, you know, paint marker, it's going to leave marks. This can actually come off with just some water. So I've gone ahead and measured it out to that. But what I'm going to do, we need to get our lateral side to side. So what I'll do is just put a line here, a line here, and then also on the back side. So that way, if it does shift a little bit, we know that we at least have a reference point to get it back squared up. So now I'm gonna measure from side to side, make sure that we have this centered, and then we're gonna be marking our holes. Now on this one in particular, we're gonna be using this center hole back here. We want this towards the cab, so we'll go ahead and you can use a punch or uh, you know whatever you want to mark with this, but we're gonna be doing some pilot holes to drill through. So something visually that you can see it. Sometimes a punch, especially on um, you know your textured spray and bed liners, you're not gonna be able to see it. So I recommend using a permanent marker or a paint marker. And we're gonna be using this third hole from the inside. So we're gonna go ahead and mark right here. We're gonna go ahead and do the same for the other side as well as the other shot of the vehicle. So I'm gonna move my rail out of the way and then we're gonna come back to each of the holes that we marked and just taking a small drill bit, this is just gonna be a pilot because when we put our brackets on underneath, it's gonna give us a visual cue to make sure we're lined up. Now the fuel tank can be pretty close to where we're drilling. So I recommend getting a small drill bit and then once you go through the bed, stop right there you don't want to damage anything in the process so center up your hole and get to drilling so 
So we're going to go ahead and grab our forward brackets. Now each uh, one is going to be side specific uh, and they're, the tabs are going to face towards the inside of the truck. So our passenger, you'll have the bolts going towards the front. So we'll check this one real quick. Now, before we get this in place, uh, you'll see that there's going to be some weld nuts here and this is going to align with that but we do have this wire harness that's in the way. Um, it's probably gonna be the same on the other side as well. So we're gonna wanna pry those off and they just snap in with these plastic clips on the frame rail. So I use a trim panel tool, it makes it pretty easy. Uh, if you don't have one of these, you can use a flathead screwdriver and it's gonna work pretty well. Um, so we'll just kind of pry these back and that's gonna give us enough room um, to kind of move this around to be able to get this in place. And I think for installation purposes, we're gonna have to move it anyway. So let's, uh, we can go ahead and slide this up. Try not to put too much stress here on our wires. So we'll slide this. And we're gonna try to get this to sit flush. And then line up your holes here. I'm just gonna kinda use my fingers. Um, and then once we have that lined up, we should be able to look up and see our pilot holes that we drilled. Now, if they are off-centered, you're gonna to want to drill those out um, centered up better. So kind of take some measurements, but it looks like that my fingers here in our weld nuts, everything looks nice and centered up. So we're gonna double check our other side, make sure that we have that going on as well. Now on the driver's side, it's a pretty tight squeeze here and mostly it's because you have hard lines as well as uh, some wire loom that you're gonna kind of have to work around. So on both ends, I kind of had to find a nice angle that it squeezed in here and I'll show you kind of what I did. I, I ended up taking off quite a bit. So you have these plugs here. You also have this large wire loom that was in the way and it's pretty tight up here. So we're gonna have to be careful later on when we bolt all this up that it's not damaging any of the wires. And then I did have to sneak it over um, this one here that was kind of looped down. So play around with it um, until you can get this into place to where it's lining up with those weld nuts. And then we can see that we have our pilot holes perfectly aligned. So we're looking good there. Now that we've put our brackets up, we know that these are lined up well, we're going to enlarge them. Now I'm going to be using a 5 8 drill bit, which is a little bit larger than what they recommend in the instruction manual. And the reason being is if you get it really tight, it's going to be hard to get these slotted through nice and straight. And sometimes they'll sit at an angle. And also having a little bit larger hole um, isn't going to cause any structural problems, but it may allow for a slight bit of adjustment because when you get your base in the rails, no matter how well you get it lined up, sometimes it's just really, really tight. And to get it removed, you have to pry it up. So if you have a little bit of wiggle room on each hole, you might be able to open that up a little bit to make it easier to drop your base in for the next time. So I'll go through, I'm gonna drill these out. Now, once you enlarge them, you're gonna to wanna to go back with the file, just kinda of make sure any of that flashing's taken out, any burrs are knocked down. And then we're just gonna go ahead, vacuum this up. And since we have exposed metal here, we're gonna to wanna to use a little bit of spray paint to coat that up. We don't want that to turn in, into rust, especially with this bolted down, water's gonna to wanna to sit in there. So you can use a clear coat. Uh, I'm gonna just use some black enamel, just kinda of hit that, and that way it's protected. Now go ahead and repeat that same process for the other holes. So we're gonna drop our carriage bolts into place uh, through our drilled holes, but we wanna make sure that the gap between the corrugations and the rail are gonna be filled. So we're using these U-shaped spacers and they almost fit flush uh, in between the corrugations, but they do sit a little bit better kind of at an angle here. So you're gonna wanna slide those in uh, and they're gonna go around where the carriage bolt's gonna you know, go through the rail here, just to kind of give it a little bit more support. So make sure you're putting these in place uh, for all of them. And sometimes uh, the powder coating here can make it to where these don't wanna drop all the way down. You can just take a, a dead blow hammer and just kinda knock that down a little bit so it pops into place. Now 
Now, before we get our brackets mounted up, you're gonna wanna make sure that these weld nuts are cleaned out. Um, a lot of times, you know, this one's a lower mileage vehicle at the moment, so these aren't too terribly bad. Um, but over time, it's gonna build up some corrosion, just some, you'll get some, you know, grime in there just from the road. And that's gonna make for a hard time to get your hardware in. So before uh, bolting everything up, you're gonna wanna take your hardware, try to pass it through and it should thread in pretty easily. Now, if it is not, what you're gonna to wanna to do is clean that out. Um, there's a few different methods. So using a uh, penetrating oil, you can spray that in there, kind of loosen some of that corrosion up. And a tube brush works really well. Uh, we have these here at E-Trailer, just something to kind of get in those threads and clear it out. Now, if it's a little bit more corroded or rusty in there, you may need to take, um, I'd recommend getting a bolt the same pitch and size and running that through either with an impact to kind of clear that out or you can use a tap or you can actually take if you have an extra bolt you can kind of cut some slits in here to make it a tap and again you're going to want to be able to run these through now we have weld nuts for all four of the brackets so we have this hole here this hole here and we're on our passenger side driver side is going to be mirrored to that but also in the back while we have our uh, tools for cleaning these out you're going to want to go ahead and do those mounting holes as well so now we're gonna get our forward brackets in place. Now it's a good time to check to make sure those studs from the carriage bolts that we dropped down are lining up with our brackets. And if those line up, you should be able to get your hardware in place on those weld nuts. So on the one that's further back towards the rear of the truck, we're gonna take our bolt that we have here with a flat washer and a split washer. And we're gonna get this just started by hand. We don't need to tighten this down. And in fact, we wanna have a little bit of wiggle room. Uh, we'll tighten it down later. Now on the front, you can see there is a little bit of a gap just because of the curvature of the frame. So we're gonna be using the larger bolt with the same combination of flat washer and split washer, but we are gonna be taking two of these spacer blocks that we have. Uh, this is gonna be the rectangular one with the circular hole. So just kind of push this up, get those lined in before threading the bolt in. Also a good time to make sure that none of your wires are gonna be pinched up against the bracket. And once we get this one in place, we can go ahead and repeat the same process on the driver's side. With our brackets in place, we're gonna go ahead and take the offset uh, washer plate here. We're gonna put this in place. You're gonna to wanna to make sure it's in a position where uh, it's able to kinda, of, you know, it's not gonna bind against the bolt. So like this is too tight. So I'm gonna put them in like this and then we're gonna follow it up with our serrated flange nut. So you can go ahead and do this for all five of the carriage bolts that we passed down. And again, we're gonna just leave these hand tight for now. And if you need a little bit of extra thread, you should be able to push that bracket up and get a little bit more. And our center one here, I'm gonna kind of offset it towards the front. We don't want this sitting against uh, that corrugation there. It's gonna make this plate a little bit crooked. So if we put it this way with the larger part facing forward, that's gonna cinch this up nice and flush. So again, you can go ahead and get this one hand tightened on as well. So we have our brackets loosely installed. So our front rail is pretty well in place. Now there is gonna be a little bit of wiggle room um, just because we haven't fully tightened it. And that's good because we're about ready to grab our base and drop it in. And that's gonna allow us to figure out exactly where that rear ma uh, rail is gonna mount up. So you're gonna wanna grab an extra set of hands. The base is obviously pretty heavy and we're gonna just drop these in, make sure that's sitting nice and flush. And then we can get this marked out and drilled. Now before marking, we do wanna make sure that we put a little bit of tension. Um, what we're gonna do is push on the base. That way we're kinda of getting this forward rail all the way pushed forward. And then our back rail, you're gonna to wanna to push all the way back. So kinda of wedge between here, make sure that you're getting that tension. You're also gonna to wanna to double check to make sure that your width here is gonna be the same because there is a little bit of variance in sliding side to side. Now, I also recommend putting your pins in place, and that way you know that it's actually sitting nice and flush, and it's 
uh, going to be in a good situation. Some previous rails that I've done before, you can do everything right, and sometimes these just kind of fight to go in. So making sure that we have these in place is just going to make it to where it's going to be a lot easier to get our base in and out if you are going to be removing it. The holes that we're going to be using on the rear rail are going to be a little bit different than we used on the front. So uh, we are going to be using this outside one that's facing towards the tailgate, so you can mark that one. Uh, we're going to be using the inside holes here on the driver's side, so the furthest one's in. So we are going to be taking the rail off, obviously, to uh, drill that out. So uh, mark those. And then on our passenger side, it does get a little bit different. So the one on the rear, that's going to be this inside hole, just like the other side. But as we go to this forward one, it's going to be the second one from the outside. So make sure you're marking that accordingly. So just as we did on the forward holes, we're just going to drill these out with the pilot. And then uh, I'm going to get my brackets underneath, eyeball those, and then we're just going to enlarge them. So go ahead and get these all enlarged out. And then um, we can start getting our hardware in place. Now on the forward holes, uh, we have both of those up here. You'll probably notice that once you drill, it's kind of hitting something, and that's going to be the cross member that's located under the bed, and that's just going to be the extra rail for support. We do need to drill through that as well, so make sure you have a long enough drill bit, and you're going to just make it as straight as possible and drill through that. You do want to double check underneath before just drilling down, obviously, to check for any wiring. Um, because it does kind of tuck against some of this, uh, you don't want to catch that wiring in the process. So if you drill, look for a small dimple where that bit's starting to go through and just make sure you're clear before continuing. Now when drilling out the forward holes, you are going to want to run the pilot hole through and you are going to feel that it's going to hit the cross member and you want to make sure that it's lined up. That way when you get your brackets in place, you can see that pilot hole that it's all aligned properly, but it is going to get a little bit different on the driver's side front one here. And that's because we're using this tube spacer. We are going to have to enlarge this hole to allow this tube spacer to go in there and that's just going to keep that uh, cross member from crumpling down when we tighten it. So what we'll do is we'll drill our 9 16 or our 5 8 all the way through. That way this carriage bolt will be able to pass all the way through there, but we need to make it large enough to drop this in the top. So you don't want to drill out any more on the cross member. You just want it enough to where those threads go through. But the top here, I'm going to just use a step bit and 7 8 is kind of what they recommend. So I'm going to just keep my spacer here handy so we can drop that in and test fit it. And once that's able to be passed down, again, we're going to go ahead and paint this back up. Now, as far as drilling the forward hole on the passenger side, you don't want to drill all the way through the cross member. In fact, you don't even need to put the pilot hole there because what we're going to be doing there is using a nut plate that we're going to feed in on the side of the chassis to get that bolted up. So on this side, don't drill all the way through. This side, your 916 is going to go all the way through the cross member and then just enlarge with that 7 8 up top. So we'll go ahead and get our hardware put in place. So we have our tube spacer here. I'm going to just drop in. And then we can put our rail over, drop in our large carriage bolt here. And then we're going to take our regular carriage bolts and put those in place again. Wherever there's a gap here on the corrugation, we're going to want to put these U spacers in. I'm going to get a little a little tricky here. If you need to, you can use a screwdriver to kind of get that in place. And then we're going to drop in the normal carriage bolts just as we did before on this center hole here as well as the, the rear hole. But on this back, since we're going to be threading this into that, well, uh, that nut plate, this is just a hex style bolt here. So this allows us to be able to spin it. It's not a carriage style. So we're going to want to make sure that we pass this one through this hole. So we have our bolts passed through. We're going to go ahead and get our brackets in place. So our driver's side has the two holes here. Um, again, I did have to move this wire loom just to kind of get this aligned up. And then we'll just pass these in. Same thing. There's no spacers because the frame is flat here, so we can just go ahead and use 
our split washer and our flat washer. We don't have those um, rectangular ones with the hole openings. So again, I'm just gonna hand tight these in. And then we're gonna take our offset spacer blocks with our serrated flange nuts and we'll go ahead and get these in place. And we'll just kind of, again, hand tighten, snug everything so that it's nice and seated. Now on our passenger side, you are gonna see there's just the one bolt that's passed through. Um, our other one is where we're gonna take that uh, weld on nut plate and get that started, but we'll go ahead and get these started just as we did on the other side, same hardware. Now for this, you are gonna need uh, an extra set of hands to get this threaded in. So what we did is you can measure about two and three quarters of an inch back and you're gonna put a 30 degree bend. Just make sure that the nut is facing down. So this should be the flat part facing up. And we're gonna feed it in our frame rail, which should be right here. And we're gonna start uh, by having someone up top start to thread the bolt. We're gonna try to align this with it until we get it to start on there and then we can hand tighten that in place. Now we're going to go back and tighten everything down with our torque wrench, but I put the rail, uh, our base in with the pins, and that way it's going to hold at least to where we know for sure it fits. Um, and generally this is a good way to make sure that it's not going to bind up as well. Um, now the ones that we're going to tighten first are going to be the ones that go to the rail, and then we'll do the brackets uh, that go into the frame rail there. So I'm using a three quarter inch socket, so we'll go through, get these all tightened down. Uh, now we can go back and get our frame hardware up. It's also going to be a three quarter. If you're using an impact, you probably will need a swivel to get to some of these, or you can use a ratcheting wrench to get these snug down. And now we're going to use the same method that we did before by starting with the rail hardware and using our torque wrench. Torque settings are found in the instruction manual. If you need a torque wrench, we have them here. You can generally rent them uh, at an auto parts store though, and that way you don't have to go out and buy one. So we'll go through, get all of that rail hardware torque down to that setting, and then our frame bolts are going to be a little bit higher, so adjust your torque wrench accordingly. And also don't forget to do the bolt that's up top uh, that we threaded into that weld nut. So uh, we'll go ahead and get these all torqued down. Now with everything torqued down properly, all that's left to do is snug up any of those wire looms that we had to pop off. Some of them might not go back into the factory spots because the brackets are in the way. You can zip tie them, just make sure that they're snug and kind of not loose flopping around. Now you also want to make sure to get your heat shield back on, your spare tire on, and then assemble your base or the rest of your fifth wheel and then you're ready to start using it. And that was a look and installation of the B&W rail kit for your fifth wheel hitch on a 2022 Ram 2500.